short life, man, I experienced a lot of things out there. Flown on private jets, albums that sold over 40 million copies worldwide. Shootouts, street fights, club fights, whatever you name it, been there, done that. Man, I experienced the ups and downs of this fast life. So I want to share with you my story. This Napoleon, life of an outlaw. I was three years old when my mother and father got murdered. After the murder of my parents, me and my brothers, we was in the house with, my, with the dead bodies for 24 hours. And I remember as a kid that I was biting my mother, trying to wake her up. I grew up in the house of my grandparents after the death of my mother's father. So whatever I would see out on the block, drug dealing, whatever, I would go in my room and I would write a song out of it. You know, it was a way for me to relieve me. Whatever was inside of me, I was able to put it on paper. All, all I can remember all this life, we love rapping. I just can't believe it in myself. I remember the first time I met Pop Man. He asked me to rhyme for him. I rhymed for him, we hit it off, and the rest is history. But he got close with Pop, he looked at Pop like a big brother or a father figure, you know, someone to look up to. Who Ty was, um, was the Pop divine and real tough. I think Wu Ty had become one of Tupac's extended family. Hey tonight. Death Row was a very fast life, man. Parties every night, private jets. We was living like kings. There was a there was a certain amount of arrogance they all had during that time because they were on cloud nine. But I never expected to end that type of life. I never expected that that life would come to an end so drastically and so soon. Be some stuff you're gonna see that's gonna make it hard to smile in the future. As me called Gaddafi mother said, Tupac just got shot. Couldn't believe it, you know what I mean? And you know, but the first thing that I said in my head when he got shot five times before, he's gonna he's gonna take this, come out, do records, sell records and records again. But when I actually saw him in the hospital bed, to me, I knew for right then that it didn't look like he was gonna make it. You know, Pac loved him. Him, him two was bonding, so I know it it affected him real real hard. Dead at the age of 25. It was a time when I was in the music industry and I had three houses at one time. The money was coming in, but I didn't have an inner happiness, you know what I mean? I didn't have the happiness inside of me. So I knew that it had to be something else out there that could bring happiness besides money, jewelry, cars, and fame. Because once you get to a certain level, you start searching. And what I did is I turned to experiment different drugs and I turned to drinking alcohol real heavy. He was always liquored up. He was always liquored up and smoking weed. I seen him wild out with the girls, wild out drinking alcohol, getting drunk, fighting. And I happened to one day be in a recording studio and I was very intoxicated. And I got into a fight with my little brother and it got to the point where I almost probably killed my little brother. Hurt him so much that he had to go to the hospital and get staples in his head. And it happened to be a Muslim brother who was in the parking lot and he broke the fight up. He calmed me down. He came and spoke to me. I said, imagine tomorrow waking up sober and realizing that you killed your brother. How would you feel about that? He was asking me to come to the Mad Jays and for a while I was ignoring him. And when I first went up there, I remember I went up there deep, about 20 or 30 boys with me. And I, I wouldn't be expecting that it's just going to be like I rule everywhere else with a posse of crew and we just going to hang out. But when I went there, that's when I seen something different that basically inclined me towards to want to know more about what these people was upon. That's what changed my life ever since then.
You, you got an awakening. Islam has given Muta the purpose. Oh, oh man, my brother, you he's a different person out there. I think the polyam has, has, has changed in a way where it's, 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 it's beneficial to the children, beneficial to himself, to his family, and to his friends. When I looked at him, he definitely inspired me to want to, you know, give back to the youth and give back to the community in a way, you know, saying that, that, that Islam only offers you. He had a lot of potential, but he also had a lot of anger and unresolved issues that I think Islam probably gave him solace and peace. Muta is a good brother, and um, personally, I'm striving to be in my life. And Man, I'm warning you, bro. You're a good dude. You're ahead of your time. You're a leader. You're a sign for all of us. And you're on the ride with you to the world for all. Where is it? Hello. I'm going to be your spider. So I'm going to go. En siste beskjed. Av respekt for vår RDS, så ber vi alle de som fortsatt ikke har slått av eller slått av livet på mobiltelefonen sin, ta den av, så ikke det forstyrrer mens han snakker. And uh, without further ado, I hope you all give a warm welcome to our uh, distinguished guest, Brother Mutabil. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. So I chill on the chair. Uh, verily all praise is due to Allah. We seek his help, we seek his aid, we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil within our own souls. Whosoever Allah guides, there's no one to lead astray. Whosoever Allah leads astray, there's no one to guide him right. I bear witness that there is no deity where they worship in truth, except Allah alone. He has no partners, and all dominions is his. And I bear witness that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is his messenger and seal of all the prophets. First of all, I would like to thank the brothers for giving me this opportunity to be a reminder to myself first, and a reminder to you guys. The prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, if you don't thank the people, then you don't thank Allah. So jazakallah khairan for the brothers for inviting me to Norway. This is the first time I've ever been in Norway as an outlaw. I didn't come to travel this far. <laughs> Basically, like I said, I'm here as a reminder to myself and to the youth. Many of us in America, in the African-American community, we try to find ways to make it up out of the hood. Some of us turn to drug dealing. Like many of the people in my family, my brothers and my cousins, they took the route to be drug dealing. Myself, at a very young age, the first day that I went outside to sell cocaine, I was around 13, 14 years old, I got arrested. The police locked me up, they called my grandparents, I got in trouble. And basically I told myself from that day on that I need to find some way else to make it up out of the hood. Some of us in the African American community, the Hispanic community in America, some of us turned to basketball, some of us turned to baseball, football, sports. We always try to find an easy way up out of the hood. Many of us, we turn to rap music. I got into the music industry by a friend by the name of Yafeo, who happened to be a friend of mine, childhood friend of mine, and a half brother of Tupac Shakur. I got into the music industry because I wanted to escape a life of poverty, destruction, a life of criminal activity, a life of seeing people get murdered seeing people killing each other, shooting at each other, a bunch of treachery that was in the streets. I got into the music industry not knowing that that same life that I ran from was actually waiting for me in the music industry. 